Hello everyone, welcome to this special episode of Artivore Plus One. Today we've got Kale McCreeth, the Guardian guy, up um, with us after his 8-0 finish at Dunedin um, ProQuest. So we've got his Starver build and I'm going to ask him a few questions and he's going to walk us through it. So um, I guess starting off today, 8-0 is a really good finish. Um, what Did you have any really hard matchups? Um, yeah, quite a few. Um, you know, I had to play a couple of Prisms, a couple of Visceros in the mirror. Um, yeah. You know, in the final, getting my uh, crown blown up on uh, turn three was not too good, but um, <laughs> you know, managed to uh, hold it together and pull through. Yeah, so. nice. Um, so were there any um, specific... I guess that last game was probably the most difficult for you? Um, no, I think the uh, first round of top eight, I had to play... Um, sorry, I forget her name. Um, Rowan. Rowan, yeah. She was on uh, Rhino and just um, she managed to uh, you know line things up pretty well. Nice. Um, it was at the very end of the game when she got a bad beast with him that just banished the last like couple of threats that you know let me pull ahead. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that was probably the closest one of the day. Yeah, of the day. Sweet, cool. You'd be happy with your your gold foil and um, second PTQ. Yeah, mate. I was just glad I got to come down and play Fab. You know, yeah. I didn't even know about this event until yesterday. That's so. good. Great to have you, Dan. Um, I guess we'll get on to the hero. And, um, so we'll start, I guess, with the hero. Uh, why Starvo? Because uh, I can only play Bravo. All right. I don't know how to play anything else. <laughs> Fair enough. But um, yeah, the uh, the other build um, can't beat Prism. Um, yeah. This guy just gets a natural ability to do stuff, and you get stuff like Blink, and yeah, yeah. you can just do bigger things. I think. Plus two and go against Nick Track. Eh? <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty good. Um, yeah. So, so you're saying to me earlier that this is your core deck. Yep. The um, whole top two rows here are never sided out. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I guess. Um, for the majority of your matchups, what's your game plan like in in, the, in your average game? Um, well, generally, um, you know, you have to be pretty clear of what you're doing in the matchup. Um, so, mm -hmm. for example, against Chain, you go in like full fatigue. Yep. Um, you're just taking out the stuff here that doesn't block. You know, your flashes, blinks, your exposed awakening, lead the charges, and even the pulse. Yeah. And you're just going like full defense. Like, yeah. You know, having um, amplifiers like uh, you know Turn Timber or staunch yep. or um, art of war that just give you free value when you're uh, blocking yep. with rampart you know, yeah yeah um, does a lot one of the big things i guess um notable absences from your list um i noticed is no stalagmite so uh, no match up when you play stalagmite um, to be honest i think that card requires a high skill kit um and i just haven't figured out a way to actually make it work yet like mm -hmm. i haven't had a lot of time to uh play the last couple of weeks yeah so. i today had it played against me and it was um it blocked for two one turn and stopped me from resettering on the end, and yeah. that was um, pretty good use, but I think Rampart also blocks yeah. a whole lot of the course of the game. We were testing with that card in the mirror, and, you know, when they keep their three-card hand and, you know, they come in for, like, seven and then four, mm -hmm. being able to block with the Stalagmite, you know, you're blocking the two, but often the Frostbite's stopping the four coming through as well. Yeah. So, you know, that card can effectively be, like, 15 life in one game. Yeah. You know, if you can do that twice. So there's definitely value there. Um, just not really onto that yet yeah um i guess like just looking at the core one of the key differences i see with this and some of the other starvo decks is the other starvo decks have much more elemental cards and they're playing a lot less of these um generic guardians i guess guardian class staples yeah so the the key thing with bravo is i don't like the element build it's not my play style i like to be able to control my end game yeah uh, i like cards that block well um, i like cards that have purpose and having Crown of Seeds and Rampart and Winter's Well in the same deck is just too busted to not play. Yeah. This is definitely a, like a second cycle deck. Oh, 100%. Like, um, you know, the, f the whole first cycle, you're, um, you're defending through the deck, you're chipping where you can. Mm -hmm. And you find that when you get to your last 30 cards, you, that you're all elements, you're all threats and pulses. And the moment you hold this card here, you know, the chances are with all your ice cards cycling back around, you're getting the hero power every turn. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for the last six, seven turns of the game to get three plus two and a free weapon swing. Yeah. You know, if you think about five turns where you're getting an extra six damage, that's yep. 30 damage when your opponent's worn down. Yeah. I guess, can you just quickly walk us through how you get to that second cycle? So what are the defensive plays you're making and what cards are you putting on the bottom and yeah. how so are you doing that? The whole thing with, um, you know, playing the game is you've got all these big blues that if you can get them out and just force like a double block on them, you know, that means that your next turn you can block with one card, Rampart, Crown. Um, but ideally you want to be like arsenaling a threat mm -hmm. or a key elemental card. Um, and then you want to be ramparting it and then you want to be pitching one of these in your turn for the weapon. 
Yeah. Uh, you just want to thin your deck and just using um, utility cards just to, you know, push damage what you can or, you know, something like a spinal from Arsenal just being able to tax two cards and get chip damage is still good. Just nine is still a lot of damage yeah. on an off turn. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, you're just trying not to die the first half and then yeah. trying to make sure they die the second half. Yeah, so at the end of your turn, the, the bottom of your deck is looking something like these ice elemental cards and threats yeah. and pulse of candlelight. It's pretty common to see um, three elemental cards, then a red threat, and three elemental cards, and a red threat. So yeah. you get down to your last, like, 20 cards, 21 cards or something, and mm -hmm. every hand cycle you've got to play where you can just go threat. Yeah. You know, and threat into weapon is just a lot for, um, especially in the mirror where they've got all these cards that can't block. Mm -hmm. You know, life totals are close. You know, they end up just falling behind. Yeah, I think the best way to preserve some of these cards in your deck is to actually arsenal them. Oh, because they because they don't um, pitch for the two resources you need for the, the crown and the shield. So you can, if you're crowning it to the bottom, then that gets it. Yeah. Gets it there really easily. Cool. Um, so I guess going past the main deck... Um, we were give to your sideboard, so we have to see we've got a whole suite of defense reactions and then a whole bunch of utility, guess, utility cards. Yep. Yeah. Um, should we start with the defense reactions? Okay. Um, these defense reactions, um, Sink Blow is you know self-explanatory. I think it's yeah. the best um, zero cost defense react in the game. Yeah. Um, but having the uh, the six big red reacts, um, you know, to two card block for ten after you've used Crown and Rampart, you can stop a, uh, a yeah. carry power at Oak and Old or something. Um, also against decks like um, you know chain, you can uh, pitch two cards and block you know seven and one. Like you just get a lot of um, free value going through. Yeah. The turn timber is actually um, pretty niche. A lot of people have been uh, looking at like a blue staunch or yellow staunch. Yeah. Uh, this card in particular, when you've got like um, you know your ten, eleven earth cards, actually more impact because you can turn a two card hand into a nine block, where a staunch requires you to have a three card hand to get that yeah. nine block. And so this, yeah. just better versatility and key points and if it you know you sit it in the arsenal if you don't use it just crown it yeah. away i understand when it um is it four and then it goes up to eight no it's six and then it goes to eight six and it goes to eight and it costs two so yeah. when you pitch a blue you actually get that option so you can to use the rampart or rampart yeah. and blocking nine i guess in the mirror is actually pretty big because um a lot of the threats are yeah. on nine well, if you look at um crown rampart and then fuse turn timber that's ten yeah, you know, if you go um, one piece of equipment and a crown to that, you know, you can You're hit that eleven. Your crippling crushes and your polar yeah. yeah, so you can hit that um, ten eleven mark pretty easy. Off uh, quite a few cards too. Same thing with the uh, the art of wars. You know, you can use that um, defensively. You can use it offensively. Um, a little pet play that I like to do is uh, if I know that the tunic is going to tick up to three on the next turn, I'll heave the uh, pulverize, and if I know the art of war is coming up, mm -hmm. then I'll use the. Uh, Tunic to um, use the Art of War to you know, defend with a card from Arsenal or something. Yeah. Um, draw two and then I, I start my turn with a five card hand or a four card hand with a um, three surge tokens. Yeah. So, you know, little things like that, you know, people don't really um, clip onto. Cool. Um, and I guess I'll, we'll look at some more utility cards quickly. Um, Terra Sonda, um, <laughs> you know, it's either, I've seen a lot of people either play none of them or they play three of them. Yeah. You've got two of them here. Yeah. So this card, um, without Anathos, I don't think it's that great. Um, I've got two in there just because I like to pair it with the uh, Pulverize or the uh, the Awakening. Sometimes yep. you get um, game states where you pull ahead and you can use it on a Spinal or a uh, yellow or Blue Disable. Yep. Um, desperate times you can put it on the Oak and Old, but apart from that, it's actually just horrible. Like, I think two is the right amount just so that you can like have it when you need it. Mm -hmm. It's a non-attack that blocks three, which is still relevant. Um, yep. You know, you're playing to Bolton or, you know, mm. Sabres or something. Uh, so just being able to uh, end-game Awakening for a Pulverize and then tear asunder it is just, like, the best thing you can do in Fab. So to have the option there but not rely on it is pretty good. Sweet. Are there any other, like, cards you'll quickly want to highlight before we get into, like, sideboarding? <laughs> yeah, probably the uh, the Exposed Elements. Um, mm -hmm. The card initially I thought was trash. But, I did um, too. <laughs> like, it, when you've got a Viscerai player that just uh, blocks with their Skeletor, you can just choose them, you know, yeah. get that um, that win from nothing. Um, with the uptick in Prism, just being able to stop them leading with the uh, Herald to get going in yeah. is um, pretty good if you can blow that up. And in the mirror, being able to take out their Rampart and the Crown in the same card is pretty important. Yeah, it takes off so much of the, um, the yeah. like functionality of the deck. Right? Yeah, being able to play um, one copy, you know, you can um, aggressively dig for it with Crown, but you just... You know, you don't want to, but 
it's good to have yeah. the uh, tool. Definitely. Cool. I guess we'd start with um, the sideboarding for the mirror. Um, so what are you kind of looking, how are you looking to play the game in the mirror and what cards are you using? Okay, so in the mirror, I try to avoid the uh, relying on the hero power as much as possible and I just want cards that block and block well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm keeping all this in this here. You know, you keep the pulse because quite often just like a aggressive pulse with a weapon for eight is a high value play. Yep. But, you know, we're cutting the art of wars, we're cutting the lead the charges, we're cutting the uh, blinks, we're cutting the flashes. Yep. Um, you know, we just don't need them in the, uh, don't need in the, the matchup. Don't need the random hero powers we, as much. We don't need the lightning. Yeah. You know, we're not playing that game plan. We're You've playing the control. you candle yeah. hold. Yeah, yeah I noticed still you... got the uh, heaven's claws if we need yep. it, so... I notice you almost play like old Bravo in that matchup. You know, oh, you're coming in with the hammer, you're just blocking out using the optionality of the rampart in the crowd, and then you're setting up that second cycle. Yeah, this is very much a uh, an Oldham deck that ignores the hero power, but mm. plays Bravo cards. Yeah. Mm. Sweet. Uh, any like standout cards? I guess the exposed elements for the for the mirror. Uh, it was cute. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't actually get to play it against. Um, the mirror but i did get to use it against prism which was yeah. massive you know? nice um yeah just i guess i think having more threats as well is quite important yeah um yeah because they kind of i guess most other players are aggressively coming at you with their fuses and their yeah. um red autumn's touches and stuff yeah. having having the uh threat density or the um you know the the believe it or not the big blue bodies um, yeah if you can make the um, the mirror defend with one or two cards, um, it makes their hero power highly unreliable. Um, so, you know, if they're defending with two cards a turn and they're only blocking like four or five damage yep. because their deck does not block well, um, you just find that you're just pulling ahead, pulling ahead. Yeah. You know, they've got to take a big hit just to get in the game, and at that point you can normally just ignore it and come back. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely like playing a longer game plan. Yeah. Is a a really powerful like option for, for a lot of matchups um so i guess we'll move into prism which i guess is the other boogeyman of the format um prism's an incredibly powerful deck they're really good at taxing your action points and bravo is traditionally a, a one attack deck that really struggles with prism so how are you combating prism yeah. so against prism all i'm doing is i'm cutting the two terra sunders and i'm cutting all the defense reaction yeah. reactions I'm keeping all my sources of go again, your flash, your blink, your lead the charge, your art of wars. Um, I'm keeping all the uh, dominate effects, you know, the glacial or the um, macho grande. The high attack values are pretty useful too. Yeah, um, I go full elements in that matchup, um, but I do cut the terra under. I just don't want to give them the window to uh, Arclight Sentinel. Yeah. Um, I do play the time skippers in that matchup with the Nolan gloves and the crown and rampart. Um, the reason for the time skippers is quite often when you're playing the uh, fatigue game into chain uh, to prism you can actually sit there pop everything they do you can attack their uh, their auras um, but they do sometimes get a um a field full of um shields or something up yeah if your hero power ends up not coming through which it does come up you know probably yeah. one in five turns or something um that if you need to you've got to go again that can push through and then force the uh, the action yeah. on the aura but you do need a way to clear their board which is where the uh, the awakening comes in but every time you're awakening for a pulverize, they're going to arc light you. Yeah. But being able to have the time skippers there means that you can like do the awakening. They tap out their turn for the arc light. You go time skippers into your weapon, take out the arc light, and then you clear the board. Yeah. Then it's like a game reset where their turn they've likely got one card or no cards in hand. They can't do anything. Yep. Yeah, cool. And you've got these um, other cards just to get around deal damage. Yeah. Just you can take out double aura with these. You can take out double aura with these, and you can just pressure. Sweet solid and i guess um for we got uh, the two popular room blades viscera and chain which i'm guessing are somewhat similar strategies um no i think um the way that they both play into this deck is completely different um even though they're both playing for like a big turn mm -hmm. um the viscera deck once it hits that critical mass is just going to go off so yeah. you do have to pressure that deck in time um you know having the extra big bodies the you know the discard effects the you know, that tear asunders or whatever. Even the ice taxing, you just have to rush them down. So your flashes, your blinks, your um, art of wars, you're just going again, yeah. going again. Just don't leave them unchecked to build yeah. up those rune chants and Sonata for, you know, craziness. Yeah, you put them in that situation where they have to take six damage to make three rune chants. That way you're still getting um, positive uh, EV on that trade. Yeah. Um, 
with chain on the other hand i think the the more subject to play into the hands and banish that comes up so you just you're just trying to like full card block every turn in that matchup yeah 100 percent. like it's not really a uh, fun way to play fab like i think nah, there needs to be a bit more interaction interaction but you know if we're talking competitive game at a competitive level fill it up with three blocks ice cards amplifiers and all these defense reactions that yeah. get like a virtual free card every time you play them. Yeah. And uh, it really is just a case of they've got 10 turns. Yeah. You know? I think like um, from my experience in those like games where you're really trying to fatigue your opponent, um, prioritizing Arsenal on the card every single turn so you can yeah. dig for those defense reactions and get through all your defensive cards. Well, it's if you try and line up their uh, big turns with a Tunic counter, you can Tunic away your Arsenal and all of a sudden you've got five, five cards. Five cards to block with. You know, yeah. So that hand, like if you're going to pitch a card and play the pulse in that turn, you could effectively be blocking, you know, like yeah. 20 damage in that hand. Should we quickly talk about just how powerful Tunic is in this deck? Uh, it's surprisingly um, quite powerful just for the uh, crown effect alone. But, and, yeah. you know, the Art of War plays or even the uh, the breakpoint on the uh, crippling, you yeah. know, the seven power cost is actually quite hard to play. Um, yeah, without the seismic surges of yeah. your old tectonic. Yeah, so it's a thing to think about, but... Um, you know, it's just good value every couple of turns. It's a free one life or free card filter. You know, yep. like every time you can tunic your arsenal and get a look to see if you hit the third element, um, you know, it mm-hmm. uh, comes quite important. I think I've gone through pretty much all of the, the questions I was planning to ask. So I guess if I'll turn it over to you if there's anything you would like to add or any cards you want to talk about, go ahead. Um, I'd just like to see uh, more people try and pick up the uh, control side of the deck. Um, I know that the results are showing that the um, the heavy element build works, but you know Guardian is meant to be a control class. So I just like to see people actually play it like that. Yeah. You know, Fair it's enough. um, yeah. Try and try and win with skill as opposed to just going, oops, I got it. Yeah. yeah. So. I was, I personally was a bit discouraged from playing Starvo because I was like, oh, it's another high variance aggro deck, which yeah, is so. not really my cup of tea. But seeing this more controlling style, I'm. Um, I'm a bit more looking forward to playing something like this. Yeah, I think um, the big problem with the uh, elemental builds is they just get access to Awakening, you know, mm-hmm. and they're running them in multiples, and I think um, it's just encouraging bad play. You know, if you're meant to be blocking where every card matters, they're just like, okay, I'm going to take, like, damage and just beat yeah. face. So, you know, I don't really like that type of play. Yeah, so it's just resetting the game with... Yeah. You take damage, you play Awakening, you pulverize them, and then your opponent can't do anything. Yeah, and with the elemental count that they run, they're probably just fusing it and then coming through as well. Like, it's just... It, it, yeah. I've been playing Fab since day one, so I, I know what it's like to actually have to sit there and think about your end game. Yeah. And I think uh, some of these decks are just trying to win on the first cycle, and you know, yeah. I don't really think that does too much to advance somebody as a player. Yeah, first cycle gaming, I think, is... Um... Yeah, kind of come more into the game with Monarch and Aria. Yeah. A lot of the decks being really fast. Well, the card pool gets bigger, yeah. um, cards get more efficient. Um, you know, it's there's going a, to happen. There's a lot of damage in the game now, you know. But I still think there's a way to slow it down. And, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, no worries. Congrats on your finish, and thank you for this deck tech. I'm sure people will really enjoy it. Yeah, I'm not washed yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll catch you later. Cheers,